Hey guys, have you seen people try to teach how to develop hip internal rotation through drills like this, like using a split squat or various types of lunges? This is not the best way to develop internal rotation of the hip that really, if it is truly lacking, can cause potentially more low back pain, lack of performance, and even knee issues. So the key is to understand really what's going on. Let's break it down really fast and give you some better solutions. Many times on social media, the next step is to grab a skeleton and just start pu pushing and showing you guys what the joints do. Well, this is not a great skeleton. Let's not bother doing that because our body isn't just a bunch of bones. We have connected tissue, we have tendons and ligaments, and we have muscles that all greatly impact what happens to our hip. When we walk, we only get about seven degrees of internal and external rotation of the hips. Not very much, so it doesn't make sense to put ourselves in a position that mimics a lot of walking elements to get what we really need, which is about 35 to 40 degrees of hip internal rotation. Now you notice when I internally rotate my hip, how really it's a byproduct of what's happening at the foot, driving up force through that connect chain. So there are many elements that are really important to this. We need to have foot stability, ankle mobility, we have to have awareness and coordination of our hip musculature. We have to have core stability. We can even integrate components of breath work. Now, again, if we relax the system, if we increase our core stability, we'll allow for better movement like we're going to show you right now. One of the key drills in our myofascial integrated movement system, or MIM for short, is the idea of coiling. This is how we produce power when we're doing movement, but also it's a great way to teach how the hip actually internally rotates through the use of the foot and the entire kinetic chain not just the individual joint itself. Most research definitely shows that most hip issues are not the joint itself, but a byproduct of many things going on like we just talked about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in kind of a wide stance. So what you could do is you can take your feet together, heels out with one, toes out as two, heels out three, toes out four, heels out five, about there. And we can modify this as we need. Feet are gonna go out and we're gonna push the knees out so we stay rather upright. Now we don't need to go super deep right now. What I'm going to focus upon is what's happening at my hips. I'm going to shift my weight to my left by pushing through my right leg. At the same time, I'm going to try to rotate through my hips, pushing through this leg, pushing this leg to look at a 45 degree angle. So I start getting internal rotation of this hip, but also internal rotation of this hip. Then I'm going to push back to this leg, shift and rotate. So I'm starting to try to draw a figure eight with my hips. Now that is going to give me a lot better mobilization of the hip joint, and I'm going to try to relax my body as much as possible. I can take a deep breath in through my nose, exhale through my nose, trying to soften my body all throughout. This starts to teach me that force actually comes from the ground up, which we know are called ground reaction forces, and impacts what's happening at the hip. So this is the start because the myofascial chains are involved in a much superior way of actually developing internal hip mobility as we're going to continue showing. Now, you don't need to use our mobility balls, but they are super handy tools to help people gain better body awareness, also to engage their core more successfully, because if we get better core stability, research shows we generally get more hip mobility. But again, don't find this to be the limiting factor. I want you to understand principles and concepts. So when we get in this position now, we base a lot of this on ancient movement practice, but for the modern individual, where we can break this down and teach how we're going to use diagonal patterns. So diagonal patterns, like those in PNF, have a profound impact upon our stability and mobility. So if I take a deep breath in, and I shift, and I exhale, I don't want to reach the movement. Then I'm going to shift back, inhale, rotate, and then I can exhale. Inhale, rotate around, and then exhale. Pull myself back and rotate. And I can do this 10 to 15 times. And again, my feet are helping me create the stability and the movement. And my core is giving me balance and stability to the trunk. So I'm not lifting with my arm. It's a projection of what's happening in my hips. We can add more circular movement patterns. So if you've ever seen Indian clubs where people do mace work, they're all based upon circular movements that are related to PNF. We can use the same thing here. Where we start here, I come out. Now I turn my pinky out. 
I rotate and I create a circle as I come back. So I don't change the angle of really my elbow. I'm just working kind of a bigger circle with the hand and smaller circle with the shoulder, but I'm really creating the movement through my hips. Internal rotation, internal rotation, but different internal rotation and internal rotation. So now I can do some breath work, deep breath in, and exhale. Now I can do this for 30 seconds. I can do this a minute. I can do this as long as I want. But the key is what I'm teaching my body to develop better stability. We're gonna give you another drill in a second that also is a tremendous way and more efficient way to building an internal hip rotation. A lot of martial artists know basically how to use the body with better mechanics. And that's how you can see them be so fast and powerful, even though they're not of great size many times. So one of the stances that is often used in martial arts is what's called a bow stance. So if I were to take my hips in line, step back, this foot's about 45 degrees, this foot's pointing straight ahead, I'm in that bow stance. So what I want to do here is learn first, again, what's happening with the pelvis. So my weight is forward, but then if I shift back and close the joint, I'm getting that internal rotation, and I'm getting it on the other side. Then as I push forward, I rotate out, you see the mobility I'm getting in the hips again. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. So you see the much greater range of motion I'm getting in the pelvis and I'm getting in the hips than if I sat there and try to do those weird lunge movements. Now, again, I can take a mobility ball. And again, you can do this just with your hand, but the mobility ball does work better because there's some load in here. Where we're going to start in that same bow stance, I'm going to start back with the weight actually right almost in line with my belly button, my elbow a little bit away from my body. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a deep breath in as I sink into my hip. Then I exhale and basically create a diagonal line so that the weight is right in line with my leg and my hand is slightly about, you know, slightly turned inward, just very slightly. Then I'm going to pull in, push out, pull back, and push forward. So the range of motion I'm getting on my hips is so much more, but I'm also building strength and stability and mobility in other joints all at the same time. So if you want to improve your internal hip rotation, definitely try myofascial integrated movement drills like these, and you can check out our new follow-on program and our other MIM programs at our website, dvrtfitness.com.